The following presentation of the Daily Mass is made possible by your generous donations to Catholic Television of San Antonio. Archdiocese of San Antonio and CTSA invite you to join us in celebrating these sacred mysteries, listening to God's Word, and partaking of spiritual communion. Welcome to the Daily Mass. gathered on this last day of the third week of Easter in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we come together on this last day of this week, we realize as Easter progresses that we have to keep that energy alive. Our world needs us to be that light. Our world needs us to be that unblemished hope of something beyond this life to encourage us to continue building that kingdom of God here. So let us begin by asking forgiveness for our sins so that we can enter this celebration wholeheartedly with open hearts and open minds. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the brokenhearted. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, through your cross, you've shattered the chains of sin and death. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the light. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in the font of baptism have made new those who believe in you, keep safe those reborn in Christ, that defeating every onslaught of error, they may faithfully persevere, preserve the grace of your blessing. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. She was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, she grew in numbers. As Peter was passing through every region, he went down to the Holy Ones living in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas who had been confined to bed for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. He got up at once, and all the inhabitants of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now, in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which translated is Dorcas. She was completely occupied with good deeds and almsgiving. Now during those days, she fell sick and died. So after washing her, they laid her out in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please, Come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. When he arrived, 
they took him to the room upstairs where all the widows came to him weeping and showing him the tun tunics and cloaks that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter sent them all out and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to her body and said, Tabitha, rise up. She opened her eyes, saw Peter, and sat up. He gave her his hand and raised her up. And when he had called the holy ones and the widows, he presented her alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many came to believe in the Lord. The word of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord? for all the good he has done for me. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? O Lord, I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of the disciples of Jesus who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? as if the spirit that gives life while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has granted. As a result of this, many of the disciples returned to their former ways of life and no longer walked with him. Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. So here we have my buddy Peter actually getting it right for once and nothing bad happening. But before this, this is toward the end of the Bread of Life discourse where Jesus over and over again, as John portrays it, is talking that unless you eat my flesh, unless you drink my blood, you can't have eternal life. And that was hard for people. I think one of the reasons the church in today's world 
has so much of a problem with people believing in the Eucharistic miracle. 80% don't believe it as the church teaches it, is it's uncomfortable. Because not only do we believe in the bread and wine that Jesus is truly made present, we're not just remembering something that happened, we are recreating that in body, soul, and divinity, Jesus' presence in the elements of bread and wine. And then, doesn't stop there, we are a part of that. We have placed those gifts on the altar. We ourselves are asking to be transformed. And then we, as a community, receive that presence of Jesus back into our lives, into our bodies. And that is where the gift of life, because it isn't easy. Jesus knew that not everybody would believe. We have to believe that today that is going to be the same and not everybody is going to believe. And we live in this world in a way that we hope to make a difference. If we believe as Jesus wants us to believe, by that very nature, it changes our lives. If we believe as God has called us, it changes how we do things. We can't look at each other in any way other than how do I help get that person to heaven when we realize we're receiving that same gift for the same purpose, not just of our personal transformation, but for the transformation of our world. And God only knows our world needs some transformation. We have all sorts of issues going on from young people and even not so young people, people my age saying, I don't need religion, I'm spiritual. Well, what a load, load of hooey. I mean, Jesus said where two or three are gathered. It's not about you and me in this you know, relationship. It's about a community. And for the difficult times in life, that you and me thing doesn't work because we need each other as we deal with the challenges of this world. So we have a lot of work, and we need the world to know that. And people say, well, what can I do? I had one lady send me a letter saying, you keep challenging me to do things, but I'm stuck in this house. I said, well, keep writing letters. Don't write to me. Write to other people that need this message. Send people things of happy thoughts. Help to encourage them to find the grace that you know through this sacrament and keep sending those things out and reminding people about the gifts that God has given us. And when we can truly do that, we make this world truly more in the image of what God is trying to transform us into. And we take the transformative action of what we do on this table and we bring it out into the world, whether we literally receive here or we see spiritually through the miracle of all these wires and everything else and cameras as we receive and we go forth to be transformed. Let us unite our hearts in prayers, raising them to the Father in heaven. For Pope Francis and all who minister in the church, may Christ's merciful love be their guide and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence across and among nations, may the peace of Christ prevail in every heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the terminally ill, may they find comfort in Christ, present amid their suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this faith community discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, may God grant them strength and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have moved away from the practice of their faith, may the Lord enkindle their desire for him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, may they be welcomed into God's loving presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Special prayer for all the people struggling with mental health issues. And my intention for this Mass is for all those that are struggling. The number of people that come to me and they just say they don't want to live anymore is just astounding after COVID and everything else. So just pray for all those who have done that. And then the other intention is this is the last day you see me as a mere 58 year old. Next time you see me, I'll be a whole year older. 
I'm not going away for a year. It just happens between now and Monday. So I would like to pray on Thanksgiving for my parents and the gift of faith that they shared with their children and for all parents that their children may hear and recognize that gift. For these, we pray to the Lord. Guide in heaven as we offer our prayers to you, asking that you turn your grace upon us as you graciously answer to our needs. Help us to see and to know that grace in all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Who do the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Accepting compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the offering of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who has walked with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And one is one's first disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, our Bishop, Mike and Gary, our auxiliary bishops, and with the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to, to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters, especially this day, Pat and Gloria, who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not at our sins, but in the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now, although we're separated by who knows how far, let us all think of peace for each other, pray for peace for each other, and pray for peace for our world. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe all that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already here, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Keep safe, O oh Lord, we pray, those whom you have seated, who you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Again, thank you to our sponsors and those that make this possible. We have our only fundraising event coming up on the 3rd, so watch for that. I think that's a week or two weeks from Monday. A week from Monday, I'm going to guess. So that's our big fundraising event of the year, and that's a week from Monday. So look at that. This is a mission. You'll hear me say something at that event on how important I believe this to be and why I give so much time to it. So thank you for being here to all of our sponsors, to all of them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Lord be with you. And, with and may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the good news with your lives. Please help this very important ministry by making a contribution to help the televised Mass to continue by sending a donation to Catholic Television of San Antonio, 2718 West Woodlawn, San Antonio, Texas, 78228, or contribute online at ctsa.tv.